Thank you all for tuning in, and we've got a huge matchup for you. A true clash of the titans, the battle of the battle rifles. In this corner, we have the defending champion and considered the reigning champ for the last 10 years, the FN SCAR, the winner of the U.S. SOCOM contract and designated the Special Operations Forces Combat Assault Rifle. The SCAR is in service in at least 30 countries worldwide and used by the United States Special Forces. Then we have the challenger, the Patriot Ordnance Factory Revolution. This radical design actually puts the full-size rifle cartridge into the smaller, more compact AR-15 frame. So you basically get the knockdown power of the big boys in a platform intended for an intermediate cartridge like the 556. For those that don't know, a battle rifle is defined as a rifle that has a detachable magazine and fires a full power rifle cartridge like the 308. It gives the user greater knockdown power over much greater distances. The trade-off used to be a much heavier and bulkier package, but both the SCAR and the Revolution have drastically changed that conception. Let's go over the basic stats and see how these two contenders measure up. The SCAR has an overall length of 36 inches and weighs in at right about 8 pounds, which was considered amazingly light for a 308 when it was introduced. The Revolution has a collapsed length of 34 inches and weighs in at a gravity altering 6.81 pounds. We've come up with a series of tests to give a basic evaluation on how these two rifles would do head-to-head -head in ergonomics, recoil, close quarters battle, reliability, suppression, and long range. All that being said, keep in mind that none of us are what I would call operators, but seeing how we do with one platform than the next should give us all an idea of how these rifles perform and I think give you an idea of how they may handle in your hands. So without further ado, let's get ready to rumble. First up, we are going to look at the recoil impulse of these two rifles on a couple different shooters and see if we can make any observations. Both rifles have very effective muzzle brakes and other systems to help tame that 308 recoil in these lightweight packages. Let's see that again, and this time I'm going to put a dot on the muzzle where it starts. You'll notice that the revolution stays pretty level and just pushes the shooter back a little. You'll also notice that the scar dips forward ever so slightly. Let's talk about this for a second. The SCAR has a very unique recoil impulse. It is significantly less than most other 308 battle rifles. However, while the recoil is very light on your shoulder, the mass of the bolt slamming back forward is somewhat awkward feeling. You can actually see this on almost any SCAR footage, especially if it is full auto or being fired quickly. While most guns rise with recoil, the SCAR will dip. If you've never seen the bolt carry on a SCAR, this is what it looks like. It weighs in at a little over a pound and a half, and that's a very large portion of the eight pound total weight of the gun, making it very noticeable when it goes back into battery. The Revolution barely kicks any more than a traditional 5.56 AR, and between the muzzle brake and the adjustable gas block, you can really dial that recoil down, making it extremely manageable. Everyone who got to shoot the two rifles back to back all felt that the Revolution's recoil impulse felt much smoother and lighter than the recoil impulse of the FN SCAR. That feels more jarring. Next up, we decided to see how quickly we could put two shots on two different targets. This again will help test the recoil management as well as the ergonomics and ease of use. While it was very close, everyone seemed to shoot the Revolution a bit faster, and I believe this again goes back to the recoil impulse of the SCAR being a bit harsher than the Revolution. Okay. 
Then we decided to step it up a bit on the CQB test. For this one, we're going to run up to cover, take two shots on target, perform a reload, run to new cover, and take two more shots at a target, then compare times. This test also brought out the only malfunction we had from either rifle throughout the testing so I think we need to talk about reliability for a minute. During the whole test we only had one malfunction and it was from the SCAR. We also had three cameras running and still didn't get a great shot of what happened but it's a fairly common thing with the SCAR. After the reload when the shooter regripped the rifle his hand was in the path of the SCAR's reciprocating charging handle causing a malfunction. For those that don't know, the SCAR has a reciprocating charging handle and if anything impedes that movement, it will cause a malfunction. A long time ago when I first got my SCAR, like 6 years ago, I said this wasn't a big deal. But over time, my opinion on this has changed a little bit. If you had to use this gun in actual combat, you don't know what odd positions you might need to take up or where the cover or even the ground might be in the fight. And even if you train with the SCAR, in an adrenaline filled moment, you could grab it at the wrong spot and cause a malfunction along with some busted digits because it doesn't actually feel very good when that charging handle hits your hand. Both rifles overall are very ergonomic, but due to the reciprocating charging handle that can cause malfunctions, along with the fact that the POF having all of the regular controls of an AR-15 plus additional controls, we're going to give the ergonomics to the POF Revolution. Let's bring up suppression for a second, and for this portion of the test, we're going to refer directly to the FN SCAR manual, and I'll read one little excerpt for you. Any addition to your FN firearm or aftermarket accessories such as suppressors, triggers, muzzle devices, stocks, etc. is considered a modification to your firearm from its original configuration which may void your warranty. We are unable to adapt each firearm for every variable effect that might occur when you install a third party manufacturer's accessory on an FN firearm, therefore FN disclaims all responsibility and liability for any damage caused to you and or your firearm as a result of aftermarket accessory use. If an aftermarket accessory causes damage to you and or your firearm, please address your concerns with the accessory manufacturer. You also don't need to look too far into the Google machine to find some seriously pissed off SCAR owners when part of their bolt carrier receiver blew up while using a suppressor and FN tells them sorry about your luck. It's also not exactly easy to come by spare parts for your SCAR. That's why I primarily use OSS suppressors on my SCAR, and that's what I always recommend people use because they have very little increase in the back pressure. The points for the suppression test will be going to the Revolution, and just in case I ever have a problem with my SCAR, no one here ever saw my SCAR suppressed. Ever. Right? Moving on to accuracy, let me start off by saying that both of these guns are phenomenally accurate, and accuracy won't be a complaint from anyone on either of these rifles.
we did a pretty massive and drawn out long range accuracy test, but nobody likes those really long videos. Somebody should let Hickok 45 know. So this is what we've simplified it to. We took two shooters at each distance and both shooters took five shots. Of those two shooters, we chose the best shooter to use in the competition. So in essence, with both rifles, only the best results count. We did 200 yards on paper to measure for group size. And then we did steel at 700 yards. A hit counts, a miss doesn't. So at 200 yards, it looks like the Revolution has a slight advantage. Now we'll go out to 700, a hit counts and a miss doesn't. Got it. <laughs> I'll take four out of five to seven. So with our two best shooters, the Revolution went four for five at 700 and the Scar went three for five at 700. That coupled with a slight advantage in the group size at 200 means in our little test, the accuracy award will go to the Revolution. But both these guns are very accurate on any given day. One could outshoot the other. Although I will say that the better trigger in the Revolution does help in the accuracy department. The SCARS trigger is a little rough. Lastly, we'll award some points for looks, and the SCAR is just flat out one of the coolest looking rifles ever made. The FN SCAR definitely wins in the looks department, however, in our little evaluation, the POF Revolution bettered the SCAR in recoil management, ergonomics, suppression, and accuracy. So does that mean the SCAR is an awful rifle? No, of course not. Until I shot a Revolution, I would have said that the SCAR was my favorite battle rifle, and it is still a top contender. After all, while the Revolution won most of the competitions, it was very close. 
It's just that POF took everything the SCAR did better than the FAL, the AR-10, the G3, or the M1A, and did it all better than the SCAR. It's just the evolution of the battle rifle. And the fact that POF can put that cartridge into an assault rifle size package gives it a huge advantage in the handling and ergonomics area. Well guys, there it is, our first versus or comparison video. What'd you think? What'd you like? What'd you hate? Let me know in the comments section, but take it easy and be gentle. Remember I said it's my first time. Either way, thank you so much for watching. If you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now. Hit the bell so YouTube can notify you when we got a new video. As always, we got some big things in the pipeline that you won't want to miss. Want to find out what we're reviewing way before it hits YouTube? Check us out on Instagram and Facebook. There you can see what's being reviewed in real time. If you want to help support Alabama Arsenal, the best possible way to do that is on Patreon. These videos are surprisingly expensive to make and every little bit really helps and is greatly appreciated. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching.